Hello and welcome to Hug in the Snug, where today I am joined by Chris Bedford, who is the owner and managing director of Open Technology, who do who are specialists in intelligent lighting controls. That's right. Before we get started, um, you know what happens next? Hug in the Snug, we need to start with our hug. So, uh, intelligent lighting controls is going to lead me straight into my big question. Why does lighting need controls? Lighting needs controls probably for two main reasons. First of all, the soaring costs of energy that we're all facing and will continue to face for many years to come means that anywhere where we can actually prevent waste, we should. And secondly, I think nobody likes to work in an environment that is badly lit and therefore to bring lighting under proper control provides people with a much more relaxed, functional atmosphere in which to work, rest and play. Okay, nice and concise. So, what does lighting controls mean? What do we actually mean when we're saying controlling lighting? What, what are we controlling about? Well, I think in many people's minds, um, it means many different things. Everything from the humble light switch that we may find, for example, uh, in our homes, through to fully automatic lighting control, um, where there isn't a light switch in the place, it's all done automatically through sensors. Um, but really, I think intelligent lighting control that Open Technology and LIGO is about is actually having a deep understanding of how that building will operate and matching the lighting of that building to the operation of that building. For too long, I think, systems have been installed where the expert is the person who specifies um, how the controls will work at the design of the building, um, at the time that the building is designed. The issue then really becomes, well, they are not the best people to operate the building, they're not using it day to day. So how can you provide a lighting control system that effectively adjusts with how the use of your building adjusts? And by adjust, I don't mean five years down the line. I mean from the time that the system is installed to when the people get used to move into the building and we start to understand how the space is going to be used. And for that, I think our product LIGO is excellent at being able to accommodate those changes and in, and in accommodating those changes can deliver the savings both in maintenance and in energy, um, not just from day one, but ongoing throughout the life of the building. Okay, so paint a picture for me of uh, a building, um, it can be either an actual one or a kind of made up building that has intelligent light controls and what does that look like? I'm using the building, how is that different from me being in a building where there's just lights that aren't intelligently controlled? I think the answer to that is, um, with a LIGO system, you really shouldn't notice that there is um, any control there at all. In other words, we will have done a good job and the operation of the building will just mean that your, your lighting will allow you to use the building and not really notice that the, 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 um, the, the, the lighting controls at all. If we take some sort of typical examples of, of buildings that we, we do, um, if we take for instance office space, then office space is obviously about it not being lit when the building is not in use and being correctly lit when the building is in use but keeping an eye on um, the external light level. Today we have a beautiful sunny day, we would expect all the light the, the, to, to be using daylight wherever possible in, in every circumstance that we can. That said, we probably want to make sure that areas like stairwells, lift wells, um, back of house areas um, are always lit safely. Um, but the one thing that we don't want to do is to just make massive assumptions on how that building is going to operate. So for example, with LIGO, the first person in in the morning may well enter the building using their swipe card. The LIGO system can be connected simply to the access control system that when that is swiped will bring the buildings, the lighting in the building from its setback condition into its standby condition so that then when every area that I walk through and swipe will automatically bring only the lights that my swipe card enables um, enables to come on to come on. So it's kind of waking up for that person's arrival and then Correct. following and then them around exactly bringing right, light yeah. where light is needed but only where light is needed. Correct and an example of that will be where we have done the B&Q stores where for example in the past Switching off the burglar alarm would meant that the whole 50% so of the lights come on in, in the store. What happens now is when that is actually switched, the 
the intelligent PIRs that we use with LIGO will only trigger the lights that are actually brought on by the movement of people. So instead of someone coming in in the morning to the Inku store and all of the store lights coming on and lighting whole area and they might just be sitting in one bit in the back office. That's correct. Not, not too bit. pessimistic. It was only ever 50% of the lights. It was never all of them. But, but it means only like where you need it. Correct. And PIRs, they're, what does that stand for? Well, passive infrared detection. So that is basically picking us up as we walk around Knowing the store or as we walk where through the building. Is. Correct. And yes. is that a big part of, of lighting controls, being able to sense where people are and people's movements. Absolutely, yes. I mean, they, they, basically, the you know, the, the the sensors are the eyes of the system, and you know, they they will pick up where people are. Um, they are looking at light level because with the LIGO system, we use a combined light level and movement sensor together. And what that also means is that we are picking up. Um, the movement, but also because it's a combined sensor, we can use it at all times to actually be able to enhance the control strategy. Back to my point earlier about learning how the building works, it means that we can actually introduce daylight saving into the equation if we need to. So light sensors, I actually was in the National Gallery on the weekend because I'm very cultured obviously, and I saw next to one of the paintings something that said, this is a light sensor. Um, and I thought of you. So is that part of an intelligent lighting control system? Yes, it is. And with the the, the issues at the natural, uh, of course, at the uh, National Gallery, are lighting the works of art to absolutely the optimum, whilst providing them in, uh, for you to look at. But of course, the enemy of the work of art is light. So it's a Which very very dark thing. gallery squinting as a light reflects off an oil painting that you can't really see. <laughs> Well, hopefully not quite that long. And not to the National Gallery, <laughs> though. <laughs> not where it's LIGO controlled. Um, but there, you see, it's, it's, it's you know, it, again, it's just this understanding of um, how they want to light the works. So effectively, daylight is used from the top, from the top lighting in the gallery um, primarily, and then it is augmented with daylight. And the daylight um, is, sorry, with the, with, with the new LED lighting which is actually then focused onto the work of art and then you'll see that the uh, light sensor is mounted next to the work of art and from that we can tune the, the, the level of light for that particular work of art digitally and, and of course with it being digital control it is repeatable. So the gallery know that, that every morning when that, uh, the gallery is occupied and the lights are set up for the exhibition into exhibition mode they will be the, the amount of light falling upon the work of art will be constant. And that's an example where it's it's not just about energy savings, it's about having the best light. Correct. The, the Co use of the Correct. Lighting. And we make no we we make um, we make no secret of the fact that we are not experts um, at choosing the lighting technology. That, 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 that is a science in its own right. We are just experts at control. And the great thing about the LIGO system is that all we are relying upon our client to do, or a customer to do, is to engage with us and to be able to describe how they want that control to work. So they talk to you about what they want the building to be able to do, what they want to happen automatically, what they want to be able to control themselves. They can kind of paint that picture for you and you can put the controls in there to actually make sure that... Correct, because that we're coming happens. from a background of... Uh, building management systems where we understand how a building operates. So we're not looking at light fittings and what a light fitting can do for you. We're, as I say, back to the beginning, we're really looking at how that fits into an intelligent building and how to optimise the operation of your lighting in your building, which will save maintenance, it'll, it, it'll reduce your maintenance costs, and above all else, if we haven't got lights on where we don't need them, if we have we're using daylight wherever we can, and we're using presence and absence detection wherever we can, we will make significant savings okay. in the overall cost of energy for that building. So putting it into the big picture, it, it sounds exciting. I can imagine if I had a building, I'd want this. In the bigger picture, how much does it matter? How much is lighting a problem? What kind of savings are you looking at? What kind of a big difference are you making in the world? I, I, th I think if you look at how technology has developed, and, and I'm not proposing to go into one type of lighting ahead of another. Um, I always use the analogy of a car. Um, cars have got more efficient because legislation has made it so, and technology has moved on a pace. So a car that I might have driven 20 years ago 
may well have um, only achieved 25 to 30 miles to a gallon. A car, a modern car now will be doing 45. So there's been an awful lot of sort of built-in improvements and in the lighting world that tends to be talked about lumens per watt and, and, um, and other benchmarks are used for saying how efficient things have become. Um, for, in terms of the bigger picture, I think the danger is that, that if you just went and did a refurbishment of your lighting, I'm going to go away from these old fluorescent lights to more modern LEDs, you are going to make a saving. The trick you are in danger of missing is if you don't enhance that investment with lighting control so that you then get the daylight saving and you then get the um, um, PIR and absence detection that we've talked about already uh, today. If you if you miss that, you really do miss a big chunk of the savings. And and typically we've found that you know um, if, if you take day one before and you then take uh, post the project handover and tuning, you could well be looking at an overall saving in excess of sixty percent in what that has actually saved you. So put really simply, there might be really energy efficient lights, but if you just put them on and they're on all the time, you're not making the savings that you could be. I think that's pretty much a sort of common sense um, yeah, conclusion. That makes sense. All right, well, that's all from Hung the Snug, and we'll see you next time.